but I would like to uh, walk you through um, a few um, uh, elements about today's meeting. Thank you very much for um, joining us. Uh, this event is organized in collaboration with UN Women, uh, who are our partners uh, in the Gender and Social Inclusion Reference Group um, under our Governance of Climate Change Finance um, Program. Today's event is really about uh, learning and exchanging. So we have uh, identified uh, a few um, learning outcomes that we hope we will achieve together. Our, um, the, the main objective is to share country experiences uh, around this complex topic, to strengthen our common understanding uh, when it comes to co uh, concepts and the importance of this nexus across climate finance, gender and social inclusion, which is uh, um, encompassing a lot of novel challenges uh, in our times and also to increase your respective capacities uh, and awareness uh, around some of the challenges and some of the uh, existing solutions and best practices to tackle these um, multifaceted challenges. Uh, and of course, we would like to build on this wonderful group that hails from a lot of walks of life from uh, our partner uh, government policymakers, from civil society organizations, from um, sister UN agencies, from research and academia. So everybody has something very interesting to contribute and also hopefully something extremely interesting um, to learn. Um, we have a uh, very diverse uh, participation uh, from, from really a host of countries. And in our uh, summary reports, we will uh, highlight that because I th think this is our greatest um, Asset. This is our greatest value that we have this diversity. However, this is a fairly technical uh, and niche area of work. So please bear with some of the presenters that might be using technical terms. We ask them to uh, make sure that not only uh, public finance managers or planners, but, but everybody um, understands some of these um, concepts. Uh, obviously, we have uh, various levels of intervention. So the idea is to, to fill some of these knowledge gaps, but this is only the beginning in terms of, um, in terms of our learning. Um, we have uh, constituted a few polls that we would like you to uh, fill out during this event so that we can uh, have your feedback in terms of what you would like to learn more about. Um, to give you a glimpse of our agenda, this will be a busy two hours, so I wouldn't even like to take too much of time with the introductions. However, as you may have seen um, from the um, uh, invitation, we will have three country presentations, so we will be joined by uh, three different ministries, and I think this is also um, the, the uh, advantage of, of having such diversity. So Ministry of Women and Children's Affairs from Bangladesh, Ministry of Finance from Indonesia, Ministry of Agriculture uh, with a more sectoral focus from Nepal. And then we will have our partner agency, UN Women, present on some of the very um, important uh, developments around uh, the collection and use of gender statistics for policymaking. Um, and then we will have a session uh, to pose questions to the presenters and, and have some feedback from the learning component of the event. Following that, we would like you to uh, contribute to this important dialogue with your specific perspectives and with your, um, with your understanding and with your um, experience so that um, we, can, we can take away some key messages and we can really build a blueprint for, for the way forward. So we will be using what is called a Miro board, um, a platform that will allow us to have um, basically a similar setting as in any conference uh, workshop uh, setting or in a, in a room where you will be able to um, express your, your ideas on, on sticky notes, on post-it notes, and we will have volunteer rapporteurs uh, report back to plenary, but we will be explaining all the rules to that. It will fly by very fast, so we will probably need you to, to think quickly around the common challenges and the 
the potential solutions that uh, we could put forward um, in this working area. And then uh, we will have um, the report back session from the plenary uh, and, and uh, wrapping up the session with, with some agreed way forward, which will also solicit your kind feedback via a Zoom call. Um, so basically just a few uh, requests, sorry, a few requests uh, on our part to, uh, to respect during these um, interactions. So on the main floor, while we are um, listening to presentations in order to avoid um, um, interference, we, we would like you to uh, keep your um, microphones muted and uh, interact with us with, within the chat box. Um, and also uh, please uh, fill out your Zoom polls. Um, and in the breakout rooms, um, you will see how the mural platform is working. Uh, so kindly um, contribute uh, with your inputs through the platform. But uh, we would also like you to um, have uh, some interactions. If you raise your hand, obviously we can have a, uh, a more structured discussion um, in, in the smaller group. So, so that would be very rich in terms of our understanding what um, your experiences and um, backgrounds are. So thank you uh, very much for, for your um, collaboration and for your um, active contribution to this event. And without further ado, I will um, invite the first participant from Bangladesh, uh, Mr. Iqbal Hussein, to, to share his screen and give us um, an overview of the country experience from Bangladesh. Dear Mr. Iqbal, the floor is yours for 10 minutes. I will be strict with the time. <laughs> Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes. loud and clear. Yeah, yeah. Assalamu alaikum and good morning from Bangladesh. And greetings from Ministry of Women and Children Affairs, Bangladesh. Uh, I am uh, Muhammad Iqbal Hussain, working as the Joint Secretary of the Government of Bangladesh and a National Project Director of an adaptation project uh, uh, named uh, uh, Gender Responsive Coastal Adaptation, in short, GCA project, which is a collaborative project of Government of Bangladesh and UNDP Bangladesh office, financed by Green Climate Fund with some government co-financing. Uh, I'm going to present Bangladesh experience on integrating gender equality, social inclusion, and poverty reduction in climate budgeting and planning process. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm uh, going to uh, give a, a short uh, brief on the public finance management in Bangladesh. So it starts from the policy or policy is the uh, best use of public money and uh, budget formulation and preparation process is done by uh, every ministries and revisions and the parliament approves the budget and that is good for executions uh, by the ministries and departments. And uh, our accounting and monitoring system is done by our accounts offices and uh, implementation and monitoring evaluation division of the government. And then goes for reporting and auditing. We have Supreme Audit Institution, Comptroller and Auditor General of Bangladesh and also a parliamentary standing committee. Uh, if we uh, interlink the budget management process with the gender responsive climate public finance management, uh, we can uh, see that we have our climate, uh, climate finance framework, at central level and local level, we have local climate finance framework. Uh, Ministry of Women, uh, Ministry of Finance issued 
budget cost circular. We have a ministry's budget framework and mid-term budget framework, targeting mid-term budget framework from ADB. We have some indicators, including climate targets. And then the climate budget, along with the national budget, is prepared and the parliament approves it. And government has an accounting system on integrated, integrated budget accounting, budget management and accounting system that is called an IBUS++. Uh, it's identify the amount of money spent in different aspects, especially in the climate sector. And the climate performance is audited by our, again audited by our Supreme Audit Institution, Controller and Auditor General of Bangladesh and Parliamentary Standing Committee. But in the local level, we have also started social auditing. And if we give an overview of the uh, gender to the macro framework, our government started gender budget in 2000, uh, 2019 and 10, along with the national budget, our finance minister placed a gender budget in the national parliament. In 2019, government prepared our national women development policy. And this policy directs to extend all kinds of support and assistance in eliminating bottlenecks created due to climate change and disaster in case of women. And in 2013, government of Bangladesh also developed a climate change and gender adaptation plan uh, following climate, Bangladesh climate change strategy and action plan, BCC, uh, BCC SAP in 2009. have a uh, uh, look at over the gender budget over time in Bangladesh. Uh, we, it started, I have already uh, said it started from 2009 and 2010 fiscal year with four ministries, but at present 43 ministries have, their, have prepared their gender budget. And uh, overall 30% of the total budget of Bangladesh uh, is, uh, uh, is, gen uh, is uh, reflected in the gender budget report. And the amount of budget uh, spent on uh, uh, gender activities is increasing gradually. If we uh, look at the climate budget over time, though it has uh, started later on, 2017 and 18, uh, in absolute terms, it, it has increased from 18,000 crore to 25,000 crore uh, over the last five years, which is increase in 32%, gradually increasing. If we see uh, the uh, trend of climate budget in our ministry, Ministry of Women and Children Affairs, uh, we see so the climate relevant allocation of this ministry uh, have a significant rise from uh, 2017, uh, 1718 to 2021, 22. And we come to the climate budget tagging. I've already uh, said that uh, climate budget report was published first in 2017, 18. Based on our climate finance tracking methodology of the finance division of Bangladesh, they study, uh, we have a study that it, it attempts to identify the different pathways of gender dispersing climate actions, assigning weights against this item and track gender response climate finance, the allocation and expenditure in the national budget. And the methodology actually uh, we use is through our integrated budget and accounting system, we call it IBUS++. And uh, to understand how much money is allocated towards gender related activities while tackling climate change. 
It reveals from uh, the fiscal year 2019 and 20, the gender gender related relevant allocation was 26.31% in climate budget allocation. But in, this, in that fiscal year, the relevant allocation for the 25 ministries, uh, as a percentage of the total national budget, it was 7.8%. And while uh, climate relevant allocation uh, with, uh, with, with uh, which addresses gender related activities was 2.3% of the national budget. It is, though it is increasing, but it is not uh, uh, enough, we think with its C. In case of the similar to the national budget to Bangladesh, uh, we are trying to check the gender tagging in a local government budget and specific to the local government climate budget. In parallel to the development of local climate fiscal framework, a gender budget tagging study is also going on. A bit to better understand whether national tagging rational is still applicable for local budget tagging or adaptive social protection will be the key entry point for local level gender tagging in the climate budget. And this is because 80% of our local government, especially for the union position budget, is around, uh, is around for, uh, for social protection. So we go for adaptive social protection. Okay, we made a study in 2016, which was published uh, in 2020. And uh, based on the study, we designed national resilience program, and we have, we have tested it. Uh, uh, with, with a, it was an umbrella project of Ministry of uh, Disaster Management and Relief, Ministry of Women and Children Affairs, and Planning Commission of Bangladesh. And uh, we have also designed the ZCA project, which I am the National Project Director, Gender Response Coastal, Coastal Adaptation, to scale up the adaptive social protection, that is, gender transformative, adaptive, and after uh, the climate vulnerable women. Bangladesh, uh, look at the, we look at the, the poverty and climate vulnerability uh, scenario of Bangladesh. Poverty rate is 25.5% uh, and extreme poverty is near about 13%. And climate vulnerable uh, people is 24.43%, which is 48 million uh, uh, population. And the poor and marginalized groups, uh, they are the prime beneficiaries of social protection. And they are affected by the effects of climate change, such as the cyclones, droughts, prolonged and recurrent floods and increased salinity, especially in the uh, southern and southeast coast, uh, so southwest coast of Bangladesh is affected by uh, 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 this national climate is uh, 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 climate change. And especially the women, person with disability and occupationally marginalized people are the worst victim of the disaster and climate change. So we go for uh, uh, the potential specs of uh, so, uh, uh, adaptive social protection, which reduces risk and targeting uh, poverty and vulnerability with asset transport in addition to the market risk mechanism. Uh, adapting a right-based approach and promoting transformation, and transforming and promoting livelihoods and build long-term resilience to the climate and the disasters. Lastly, three key points. Government of Bangladesh intends 2% plus of its GDP spending for social protection. Uh, it requires additional 0.37% of GDP equivalent investment if we put off the public servant pension aside. This requires new program or additionally to the existing program. And the social uh, and the adaptive social uh, uh, protection can bridge that gap. And second point is uh, there is need to have integrated 
accepting aid programs targeting climate and vulnerable and disaster victims in the disaster prone areas, both for households and as a community as a whole. And thirdly, exposure and sensitivity to climate hazards are different for men and women, poor and rich. So, a process to reduce poverty and vulnerability has to be highly gender sensitive. Thank you all for questions hearing. This is all from Bangladesh. Thank you very much. Um... Mr. Hussain, uh, it was um, indeed a very insightful presentation, um, exploring um, some of the parallel uh, efforts of, of the government around gender responsive budgeting and climate budgeting and the extremely important role of social protection. Now it is my great pleasure to um, pass the floor to Ms. Anita Zastra from, uh, uh, from Indonesia to present the Indonesian perspective. The floor is yours, Ms. Anita. Thank you, Sylvia, and good morning and good uh, afternoon or evening, everyone here. Uh, thank you for having me here and have the opportunity to this uh, sharing session, uh, learning from other countries. And now uh, thank you for the opportunity for me to uh, share a bit about what Indonesia have done until now. So I'm gonna share my screen now. <clears throat> Okay, uh, so uh, today I'm gonna talk about the uh, climate budget taking in Indonesia. So how an integration uh, into the national uh, and region planning and uh, budgeting system. So first of all, uh, let me introduce uh, myself. I'm uh, Zenita. I'm from the Center for Climate Finance and Multilateral Policy in a Fiscal Policy Agency and Ministry of Finance of uh, Indonesia. So, um, so the first section is going to be about this: how to synchronizing budgeting planning through the co-benefit taking. Uh, one is climate change, the second is the gender. So um, Indonesia is, um, oh, sorry, what happened? Okay, so um, Indonesia is um, one of the very vulnerable country to the impact of the climate change as it's a geographical condition consisting of uh, many small islands. So uh, two thirds of Indonesia is consists of the sea. So through the uh, National Determined Contribution or NDC, Indonesia has committed to reduce greenhouse gases emissions from the uh, business as usual level in year 2030. Indonesia has committed in reducing as much as 29% through the uh, national efforts and up to 41% with the international support. So uh, in Indonesia, we are uh, costing, uh, estimating the climate change mitigation through the uh, second biennial update report uh, done by uh, the Ministry of Environment. Uh, it's uh, a cumulative Accumulative climate change mitigation costs rates are up to 3.4 trillion until 2030. And based on the NDC, it's um, up to 4.5 trillion. So actually the climate budget taking initiative in Indonesia uh, started in 2012 through the mitigation fiscal framework study. And uh, the implementation of climate change mitigation budget tagging uh, started in 2016. It's still through the uh, previous system uh, called <clears throat> ADIC, and now the system is has been uh, replaced by Karisna. And uh, now uh, the tagging is not only about mitigation, but also uh, already integrated the adaptation. So the climate budget taking initiative began in uh, 2014, uh, as you saw before in the uh, uh, table. And now it, it's uh, tried to identify outputs and activities of uh, ministries, 
uh, related to climate change, whether it's mitigation and also adaptation in for. Uh, the tagging is right to mapping the need for climate change budget to explore the potential financing other than the state budget. So we try to look at the innovative financing other the uh, APBN or state budget. It's also try to support the budget transparency with performance-based budgeting effort. So we can see here that the uh, overall Indonesia climate budget figure started in 2016 up to uh, 2020. So mitigation is accumulated up to 74% and for adaptation is 26%. Uh, so we have the guidance for climate budget taking. It is developed by the Minister of Finance and also Bapenas. And of course, it uh, with the support of the uh, UNDP Indonesia. So now uh, we know that the uh, climate change uh, impact or has a different consequences. It's not uh, gender neutral for the women uh, and men and also children or the disability group. So women and marginalized groups suffer disproportionately from the adverse uh, effect of climate change. But now uh, we try to how promoting that they're not only be the victim, but how they can be the agent of change and also lead the uh, climate mitigation and adaptation uh, action. So uh, the uh, this tagging, the gender tagging, is to identify gender mainstreaming in outputs related to climate mitigation and adaptation. It's also implemented in uh, co-benefit tagging in Krishna. Uh, it's same with the uh, climate uh, tagging. So uh, the gender mainstreaming policy in Indonesia, uh, we have already uh, put it in a several regulation and the mechanism is uh, through a tools, uh, gender analysis pathway and also gender budget statement with several key stakeholders that become a driver of this uh, initiative. This is a milestone in gender responsive uh, climate budgeting. It's uh, the gender taking actually started in 2010 and uh, in the 2019, uh, the um, Fiscal Policy Office has a study on gender responsive climate change budgeting. It's uh, the support with the UNDP and it's analysis regarding the co-benefit taking uh, figure uh, in piloting ministry. We uh, choose two, it's uh, KLHK, Ministry of Environment and also Ministry of Energy. We try to see how the correlation between the gender and climate change thematic. And in 2020, this continuing from the uh, study in 2019, so help with the C4, uh, Indonesia already developed a study on leveraging climate finance for gender equality and poverty reduction. The study was done by assessing uh, different climate change, climate finance mechanism and climate projects implementation at the subnational level. So we already uh, have the mapping of both uh, situation. One is in the national and also in the subnational level. And continuing this initiative in uh, 2021 or uh, this year. Uh, so the Ministry of Finance uh, together with the Ministry of Women Empowerment and Child Protection, and also still uh, the uh, with support with the UNDP is very concerned about this uh, climate gender. And we are uh, developing a gender responsive climate budget taking technical guidance document. And it's uh, now uh, we are on the stage of piloting on the uh, ministry, the technical ministry to see whether is this guidance is implementative or not. So this is the result of study that I have already mentioned earlier. So there's like two study and the study highlighted both challenges and opportunities. So there's still lack of understanding, lack of uh, coordination, and the number of double tech outputs should be uh, accelerated to the enabling environment. Is it uh, through the uh, gender guidelines that we are now still uh, developing? 
So we already uh, done training series for the ministry and institution that have climate related programs. I think this is the key because um, awareness is the key. It's, it's very important because uh, climate change itself is still like um, a thing that I need to be explored more, uh, need to be understood more by the uh, ministry and also the regional government and now uh, gender. So we need to uh, train and, and give more um, uh, knowledge what's the correlation between a climate change and gender. And this is the way forward. So this is uh, on the um, technical guidance document on gender responsive climate budget taking. So next, so this is the uh, piloting climate budget taking at sub national level. So it's uh, Indonesia has not done the uh, climate budget taking not only in the national level, but also in the sub national one. So uh, last year we already piloting for the 11 uh, regional government and now still continuing with the uh, several more. Is this, uh, the goal is to sharpening the role of local government in contributing to tackling climate change. And also it's important to how to strengthen the coordination between the central and local government because the uh, NDC target cannot be achieved just by the national action, but also uh, with the uh, regional government. And how to uh, optimizing the benefit of budget taking and developing the climate change awareness ecosystem. So this is the potential climate change budget in 11 piloting uh, last year. So the forest sector become the biggest potential for the RCBT, we call it, with the uh, mitigation budget with efforts of 398 million per year, or 34% of total mitigation budget. So still, uh, is the mitigation and also with uh, adaptation, larger percentage of budget is allocated to support water security is 44%. So uh, it's a bit different with the national one in the regional government, the trend is uh, adaptation uh, budget is uh, having more vigor than the uh, mitigation one. So for the uh, RCBT itself, we already, uh, develop the uh, climate change budget taking uh, guidelines too, same with the national one. And this is the book still with the support of the Indo uh, UNDP Indonesia. So this is the result of the 2020 regional climate budget taking implementation analysis. So <clears throat> it's more the recommendation is more to how sharpening the role of local government in contributing to climate change management. One is by the identification of the physical indicators needed in the calculation of greenhouse gases, gases uh, emission, and how the uh, compilation of financing needs to achieve climate change mitigation targets. So uh, again, same with the national one, how we try to see how much is the gap and try to look at for the innovative financing rather than just uh, looking for the uh, state budget that is very limited. So this one, we already uh, developed a climate change fiscal framework. So a uh, fiscal uh, office policy agency is developing climate change fiscal framework that we set out fiscal policy strategy to meet the NDC SDG <clears throat> local uh, carbon development initiative. It will, the CCFF will uh, identify the uh, supply and demand of climate finance and those the gap and how the policy and strategy will fill this financing gap. As well, it will set out how climate finance policy will respond to shocks such as current pandemic or to maintain the commitment to climate action. So this uh, climate change fiscal framework is try to mapping or capturing the bigger uh, picture, how the Indonesia uh, climate change, uh, 
how Indonesia tackling the uh, climate change, whether it's a, a mitigation or adaptation. So how's the strategy, like how if we meet the shock like this, the pandemic, so what should we done? So this is like a bigger picture of the Indonesia climate change uh, initiative. I think uh, probably that's all uh, for me. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to share and I will stop sharing and give it back to Sylvia. Thank you so very much, Miss Anita, to walking us through this extremely comprehensive country experience from uh, Indonesia, ranging from the macro level, also the climate change financing framework development, which I think is an extremely um, uh, insightful process and also the subnational planning processes. So I think we, we all learned a lot from you and from your experience. And now it is my great pleasure to hand the floor over uh, to Nepal, Mr. Lal Kumar, um, to, to uh, show us um, insights from uh, the sectoral perspective and from Nepalese perspective. The floor is yours, Mr. Kumar. Mr. Kumar, I hope, uh... oh, there you are, okay. Just take your time. <laughs> oh, yeah. I believe you have the host. Mm, yes. Yeah, just put uh, yeah. share screen and your presentation. I think we tested it, so it should be working. Yes. Excellent. Floor is yours. Have you seen? Yes, perfect. Hello? Please yes. go ahead. Okay. Thank you, uh, Sylvia. Uh, good morning, every, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you for providing this uh, great opportunity to Nepal, as well as me. Uh, this is uh, Lal Kumar Srest from Nepal. Uh, I am looking after uh, monitoring and evaluation section of uh, Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development. Uh, my presentation is based on especially climate budget tagging in agriculture sector, uh, based on uh, our experience, especially in agriculture sector. So <clears throat> uh, I will cover, I, I've covered the presentation uh, of my, my, in my presentation, uh, is the context and what is the uh, journey of Nepal in budget, uh, climate budget tagging. Uh, similarly, um, uh, improved budget tagging system. Then uh, what is the benefits and challenges we face and the uh, comparison of budget allocation uh, last four years. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, I. Uh, uh, the key messages. Uh, uh, this is the this is the contest uh, of uh, the Nepal. Agriculture is the most uh, vulnerable economic sector in uh, Nepal. Uh, extreme events of floods, floods, drought, losses of water uh, water source. Uh, changing rainfall pattern, delayed monsoon, news, uh, disease insect after crop production. Uh, similarly, achieving sustainable development goal requires enhancing resilience of vulnerable population. 
Uh, likewise, uh, limited financial resource need to address SDG and disease, uh, DRR, inclusive uh, development. And um, lastly, uh, mainstream climate change in agriculture plans and budget begins with uh, climate budget tagging in 2013. Uh, this is the journey of uh, Nepal, uh, Nepal's journey on budget, uh, climate budget tagging. First, we were, previously we have uh, 11 broad category, climate related activity defined by 11 broad category. Uh, in the same line, development programs are uh, tagged as highly relevant, uh, greater, uh, greater than 60% budget related to climate change and relevant uh, 20 to 60 percent budget uh, relevant and neutral below 20 percent budget. Uh, then after uh, we have formulated uh, climate change uh, financing framework in 2017. Climate change financing framework uh, formulated in 2017 with a uh, roadmap of uh, reforms in public finance management system. Uh, to improve climate budget accuracy and address sectoral nuance. Uh, similarly, to improve accountability in governance of climate finance. Uh, initiate tagging uh, when plans are formulated, uh, not after they have been in plan. Uh, then after uh, this, uh, plan, uh, public finance management system to enable evaluation of climate uh, investment in reducing vulnerability. Similarly, uh, Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development took a lead in moving, uh, tagging, um, uh, mo improving tagging method as envisioned by climate, uh, fi climate change finance uh, framework uh, roadmap. Uh, we can see in this, uh, we can visit uh, climate finance development effectiveness or the uh, country Nepal, you can see uh, different types of publication related to Nepal, including climate financing framework. Uh, then now we are uh, in um, Im improved budget tagging system. Previously, we, we, we have uh, uh, 11 broad category when we, we are uh, coding in program level. Um, but uh, right now we are uh, uh, coding in activity legal level last, uh, since last three years. So uh, improved uh, method introduced seven typology to define climate related activities. So typology helps in reducing subjectivity in defining climate related activity. Tagging is done at activity level for uh, improved uh, more accuracy. Uh, for uh, tagging, uh, we have also degree of relevancy of climate budget is done answering three questions for each activity instead of uh, budget uh, bracket. Uh, those three questions are, uh, the first question is, is the information about climate vulnerability of, uh, uh, of the area, where the activity will be implemented, available and measurable, as or no, uh, two options. The second question is, are the beneficiaries including gender that the activity uh, will uh, support with a specified climate objective are uh, non and countable, yes or no? And the last question is, can the linkages of activity with national climate policy, SDG and uh, SDG NDC be established or uh, this activity uh, can help for the national uh, climate policy? Uh, out of three questions, if two or more uh, yes, the activity is highly relevant. Uh, but if two of them are no, the activity is tagged as relevant. Uh, for the improved uh, budget tagging system, uh, Ministry of uh, Agriculture and Livestock uh, develop uh, agriculture sector climate budget tagging directives 2018. Uh, in Nepali version. So uh, we are uh, guided uh, these directives for um, climate budget tagging. And this is the uh, benefit uh, of the climate budget tagging. Um, the first one is improved budget uh, accuracy. 
uh, then uh, it uh, disaggregated into gender-based beneficiaries, help meet national commitments, SDG, uh, NDC, evaluation of climate investment possi uh, possible. Um, the next one is the cycle of demand and uh, supply of climate information. The last one uh, is Ministry of Finance coordinates climate action through budget. Uh, there are so many benefits, although uh, there is also, we are facing uh, challenges also. It's, um, the challenges uh, are uh, facing beneficiary maybe still be subjective requires continue uh, support to planners for uh, some times, especially when we cover other sector. The next challenge is rule out to sub-national uh, level. Uh, then uh, now, uh, this is the budget allocation of last uh, four years. Uh, I, uh, we can see here in the table um, uh, in comparing uh, with comparing last year, um, the highly relevant budget has increased uh, slightly, but the share of the relevant budget uh, jumped uh, from uh, 45 to 69 or 68. Uh, similarly, the neutral budget has declined from 51 to 25%. Uh, uh, so you can see 2018 and 19, this is highly relevant, is 3.30, uh, uh, relevant is 45. Uh, this is in program level uh, tagging, system tagging. But in 2019-20, uh, highly relevant is slightly increased, but relevant uh, budget is increased uh, increase uh, or this is uh, 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 relevant budget here is 68% uh, in activity level tagging. So uh, this uh, relevant and ha highly relevant uh, share of uh, percentage of share of program is increasing uh, in activity level. Uh, now currently uh, highly relevant is 6.4% uh, and relevant is 62.2%. Uh, in activity level coding. Uh, so uh, now uh, Ministry of uh, Finance is issuing activity level uh, climate coding directives and orientation to all line ministry for adaptation of fiscal year 2020 and national budget planning. Uh, unfortunately, uh, due to COVID, um, we cannot do more about uh, in federal sectoral ministry except agriculture. Um, now, um, Ministry of uh, in Forest and Environment is, is starting uh, for um, guideline uh, preparation of guideline of uh, climate budget uh, coding. Uh, except this, so we cannot, uh, we haven't uh, go uh, in sub national level due to COVID. And similarly, Ministry of uh, Ministry of Finance coordinates through uh, interministerial coordination committee on climate finance. It has uh, in coordination inter uh, ministry or cross, uh, uh, cross sectional uh, environmental related ministry. Uh, similarly, since 2017, FCCO has been including climate expenditure report annually. Uh, maybe this is the, my uh, final uh, slide, last slide. Uh, this is the key message uh, uh, from our experience in agri especially agriculture sector in uh, climate budget coding. Uh, the first one is this is the first time planning officer of NISTI have done the tagging and tagging is uh, done activity level rather than program level. Um, um, uh, planning officer are continually trained while doing the tagging climate activity and tagging is while planning is not possible rather than post planning. Uh, gender is now considered with climate budget. The ministry has tagged more budget as climate budget than earlier. Uh, this uh, also uh, um, previous data also um, prove uh, this statement. Then, uh, then um, the next one is uh, there is challenging for rule out uh, sub national level. Uh, we are in restructuring uh, phase. Uh, Nepal is federal restructuring phase. So uh, we have uh, no legal mechanism for uh, reporting, uh, monitoring and reporting, reporting system from uh, local level, uh, provincial level to central level. 
uh, so due to this uh, the uh, sub um, uh, this is the um, this is the problem we are facing uh, then um, the next one is there is a pro probability of improvement in uh, climate climate budget tagging and uh, in our uh, practical experience software is needed to be customized or uh, mandatory uh, when planning officer uh, entry uh, their activity at the time um, there is a um, uh, uh, different option but uh, with uh, uh, in uh, software uh, it should be mandatory for um, uh, improvement uh, software or um, accuracy of uh, climate budget. Uh, finally, uh, important tool to ensure green recovery efforts uh, for COVID-19 situation in the country. Uh, no. Except this, um, uh, um, I've already mentioned that um, uh, in Nepal, sectoral ministry uh, at pro um, federal uh, government as well as provincial, we have a uh, okay, uh, label, CBT is not uh, in progress. Um, just we are uh, trying to prepare um, federal uh, ministry in uh, Ministry of Forest and Environment. Uh, I think uh, this is the, my, uh, uh, this is finished my presentation. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kumar. It was um, a very um, interesting presentation on some of the sectoral approaches with a view also to some of the m and &E efforts to, to sharpen those. And we will be discussing those uh, as well in, in the breakout rooms. Uh, now it is my pleasure to ask um, my colleague from UN Women, Athena Galao, to, to um, quickly give us some insights around the importance of the collection uh, and analysis of sex desegregated data to inform policy around the gender, social inclusion and climate change nexus. Um, so the floor is yours, Athena. Hello, everyone. Um, let me just do this. Okay, um, how is everyone? Are you enjoying the event? Hello, um, just to start before I go into the presentations, I've heard a lot about climate tagging and there's increased efforts to actually measure how gender is also included in climate finance. But maybe let's take like uh, 10 seconds just to think about this question. Um, so are our investments building the resilience of women in the poorest communities? We talk about this proportional impacts of, of climate change and disasters to women and the most vulnerable group. So are these investments actually you know, utilized in order to build their adaptive capacity? So this is a question we often ask when we work in accountability. Um, and I myself as undertook um, adaptation track an adaptation tracking exercise we develop methodologies utilize real markers in a granular way put gender indicators to understand really if bilateral multilateral investments are actually impacting women the way we want them to be impacted so um, I, without going into the details of that research what we're saying is that actually whatever we did about adaptation tracking it was really costly and it was um, it was ad hoc. And it was tedious. We it took us an, a year and a half to actually generate information to answer this question. But what if, what if we do that and we built a way within our system to actually answer this question? So what if we're able to generate data to periodically inform budgeting in the planning process related to climate finance or climate action? So um, the Empower Project, which is I am which I am part of, is a five-year initiative together with UN Women and the UN Environment Program, and generously supported by the Swedish International Development Coordination Cooperation Agency. And one of our outputs actually is to strengthen the production and the use of gender data. So in the work that we've done, um, I think gender data is something that's actually um, a common denominator when you do climate tagging, when you do gender-based budgeting. So, so data is, um, these are some of the common challenges that we've seen in the last three years that we've been working in this sector. So one is that um, there is actually limited, because there is, 
so let me just say that there is a tautological issue about um, the limitation of the limit, well, sorry, limited integration of gender in policy and the limited data. So, so policymakers are saying, oh, there's no data. But then data producers, like the statistics offices, are saying, oh, there's no impetus for us to actually get data because it's not in the policies. So we have like a, a back and forth of this challenge. And also, when there is actually data out there, it's usually not disaggregated. And um, so you, you can't really see what's happening to different to women, to men, to girls and boys. And at the same time, there are actually varying levels of understanding in terms of data needs. So um, the, the statistics office don't usually know what data produce, to produce, while the, the, the policymakers often don't know, um, you know what, what data is actually out there for them to use. So we have like a couple of common challenges that we've seen so far. And um, yeah, and one of them also is um, the lack of, gen of gender environment indicators. So we, without indicators, of course, we can't monitor progress, we can't report progress. So that's also one of the main challenges. Um, so before going into this whole data thing, let's just define what gender data, gender statistics is. So I know a lot of you have heard sex about sex as aggregated data. And yes, it's true. It's part of gender statistics, but it's only one part of it. Um, uh, some of the gender, one part of gender statistics is also pertaining to data between specifically on women or men. So you can talk, this can um, include like mortality rates, um, specific information about men's health. So it doesn't just have to be this aggregated data. It also is data that tries to capture specific gender issues, including um, gender roles, access and control over resources, participation in decision making. So gender statistics is actually a lot of things. And so, so what have um, Empower's work been in terms of you know, integrating gender statistics or promoting gender statistics? So what we have done so far in this area is that we have conducted several assessments with our pilot countries, and one of them is actually Bangladesh, Cambodia, and Vietnam. So we looked at what are the national mandates and international commitments that actually re require the reporting of gender um, data. And then we also looked at operational mechanisms within those countries, so the statistics offices, the Ministry of Environment, the MOA, Ministry of um, Women's Affairs, and see how they're actually linked into producing information about um, climate change and gender and how, how, how like the interlinkages of it. And also, we'll try to look into the data sources. So what are the existing um, data sources in countries to actually produce gender data? And how can we maximize them? So as, after the assessments, we try to develop um, a set of um, example indicators where we, where we have like a consultation with national agencies. And also, we did it for the region. And after this consultation, we develop a set of um, indicators um, well, set of example indicators that integrates gender, climate change, and disasters. So I will share with you, or my colleague Bobby will share with you, a link to the, to the set of example indicators, which I think will be useful even for your specific countries. So aside from that, we also try to do um, a couple of learning activities to really understand what are the data needs in terms of policymaking and climate action. So one, one I, I'm not sure if some of you were able to attend, but we had a, just a, an event last Monday where we tried to um, unearth the specific practices of different ministries and government agencies in terms of the use of gender statistics and also the production of gender statistics. From the researches that we've done so far, um, these are the recommendations that um, we see. So first, in order to actually report on climate investments or um, the impact of, of climate action to women, there's a need to actually adopt a national set of indicators to make sure that you know, we are able to monitor and report on our progresses. And then there's also a need to actually develop a set of guidelines and tools for collecting and using gender statistics. So um, yeah, uh, it's not, so gender statistics ha is part of, of, of you know, uh, uh, of the, na the, nor the, the, the periodic way of collecting things. It's just a matter of really seeing what are the gaps in, in that, so like in, in the way that we do our labor for, for surveys or we do our 
we do our um, censuses. So, so there's a need to really um, produce tools pertaining to gender statistics. And then we also see that there is a need to actually agree on responsibilities between data producers and data users. So that's policymakers and practitioners, development practitioners, and the ones like statistics offices to really understand like how can we improve the production of data and the use of these data. And also, um, there is a need to actually facilitate discussions to include gender, climate change, and disaster-related statistics in the National Statistics Report. So it becomes really part, it's, it becomes really mainstreamed in the processes, in, in the process that we use to, to do our planning, our budgeting, and monitoring. So um, another thing that we're actually doing now, which I hope maybe later on I can find some of you, is that we're trying to develop um, a quick reference guide on using gender statistics um, for policy and action. So this is primarily targeted to um, policymakers and development practitioners on how they can use data better for policymaking, for research, for advocacy, and for accountability purposes. So this um, reference guide would include examples from different countries. And this is something that I probably would need your help because I, I see there's a lot of like um, examples in the way you actually do climate finance and how you're trying to monitor and track um, gender outcomes in, in the tagging system that you do. So that's something that we um, I would probably need your help in. So this guide is a complementary guide for another guide that um, UNSCAP and UN Women is developing, which is specifically for data producers. So yeah. So lastly, just to sum up, <laughs> So why are we talking about gender statistics in, um, in climate investment? Um, well, first, of course, it's important to track, really, if we're making progress in terms of our commitments on leave no one behind, our commitments to use, utilize human rights-based approaches, and really understand how we we're building adaptive capacity. These are some of the um, recommendations that we hope you can take with you. So first is that I hope that you can develop or you can use example indicators to really um, inform the decisions that you do in terms of climate policy and climate finance. Second is that um, this is something that we hope um, we really impart is that gender statistics or gender data is not a standalone process and it aims to actually strengthen gender responsive um, processes. So that means that we still have to not because we have gender statistics, we don't have to do the other gender bit, which is, you know, doing gender analysis, understanding how women and men can actively or meaningfully participate in development processes. So we, it's, it is something that we can use to strengthen our, our gender responsive approaches. So, and the last bit is that we hope we hope that you, we encourage you to actually monitor and evaluate broader changes related to adaptation and mitigation finance, and that we try to see what are the changes in, in terms of vulnerabilities and capacities and power, power relations in general. Gender statistics is only one of, of the ways or the tools that we can use to do this, um, but we also encourage other qualitative processes in order to, you know, um, to, or the, to provide more nuancing and how we're actually affecting women's lives or the most vulnerable's lives. So I guess that's it. Um, I hope this is useful for you to take in terms of doing climate finance. Um, but yeah, thanks so much. Sylvia, please take the floor. Mm. Thank you very much, Athena, for this very insightful presentation. I think it was very useful to remind um, all the participants that without adequate data um, collection, uh, we are not seeing clearly um, in terms of our interventions, in terms of our um, targeting, in terms of our impact. So um, I think for the discussion around m and &E, uh, in the breakout rooms, it will be very useful to, to be reminded of these um, issues. Um, since time is running, um, I will just quickly launch this poll. Hopefully you will all see it to get your quick feedback around um, how you're feeling about some of the uh, learning elements and what is the most um, interesting to you. Uh, for your work, from for your for your background, where you would like to um, learn more, understand more. So this also helps us going forward in terms of how to shape our future collaborative and learning events. Thank you um, very much for that. And while you are doing that, if there are any other questions, 
please do not hesitate while well, we have the participants here, but this um, will obviously be recorded. We will be sharing the presentations, we'll be sharing the links um, so that you can dig deeper into some of the tools um, that might be quite um, cumbersome and, and technical uh, to be able to um, explore in, in great detail now, <clears throat> but we hope to um, we hope to allow you that. Um, the next uh, part of the um, uh, the session will be uh, about you, about your um, power of, of force of, of coming from various backgrounds, and we will be assigning you to um, three breakout rooms and uh, with very specific questions uh, and discussions, it will be um, moderated by the three of us, um, Athena, uh, my colleague uh, Tsering, um, and myself. And I would also like to ask Athena to quickly um, uh, explain a little bit about the platform for the breakout rooms um, so that um, you won't uh, feel intimidated about uh, filling out some of the um, uh, some of the uh, sticky notes, and it's a fairly uh, easy and straightforward tool that allows us to have um, this sort of mock uh, whiteboard and breaking um, and breakout session. So I hope we will really gather some of your perspectives uh, around uh, key topics that we would like to um, crystallize in terms of learning uh, from this event. So thank you very much. I think uh, we have. Uh, some interesting results, um, just uh, so that you can also see. Uh, it looks like the, the great winner um, is around uh, national uh, macro level integrating frameworks and then uh, uh, looking at some of the other uh, approaches. So thank you very much for, for uh, sharing this information with us. It will greatly um, uh, influence also our thinking uh, going forward in terms of what is, is more uh, useful and where there are some still uh, knowledge gaps and what you would like to also learn uh, about in the future. Thank you very much. Um, so now I would like to ask Athena again to give us a, a couple insights uh, about the Miro platform. Thank you. Hello again. Um, Sylvia, sorry, would you want to start first with um, a presentation on the, on the work that is needed before we go to the platform? Um, I think it's useful just to, to show how it works. And then in the, the actual breaking rooms, uh, we, will, uh, we will discuss the questions just so that people understand uh, the platform's um, functionalities. Okay, so hello everyone, welcome back. <laughs> um, so this is what we call a Miro board and we will be using this for our breakout sessions. So each of the groups, we will be divided into three groups and each of the group will have one board to them. So let me just show you a board. So this is one of the boards. It will have um, the key question along with um, the what do you call this? Um, guide questions, another, uh, another set of guide questions for challenges and another set for um, emerging solutions. For, so if all you have to do when you use this platform, this, um, this tool is that you just um, select a sticky note, as you can see here, and then you can type, um, you can type your, sorry, I'm in presentation mode. You can type your answer to the question in the sticky notes. So for instance, um, lack of training, I see, see here. So you can just put your answers in a sticky note. You can, you can um, sorry, press the sticky note and you can drag it anywhere you want it, uh, depending on you know, where you want the answer to be. And then also, um, if you can look at my screen on the lower right, on the lower right hand of my screen, there is a mini map. So that tells you where you are in this board, which I think is very useful just in case you get lost because this is um, you know, um, a whiteboard, an, an, an infinite whiteboard. So you might get lost. So please use this map to navigate your around in the board and make sure that you are in the right group. So we have the numbers of the group in each of the boards. So there, um, I hope that's easy enough. So we have a couple of sticky notes here 
that you can just move around and I hope that works. And if you will be having difficulties in actually filling out the board, I will be there or each of us will be in each of the groups to help you with it. So I will share the link to the board right now so you can try to see it before we actually begin this exercise. There you go. Yes, we will need to click on this uh, once you're in the room. So there. And we will have uh, approximately um, 15, 20 minutes for, for both sets of questions. And uh, a volunteer rapporteur will then quickly feed back to the session. If someone has difficulty uh, typing, we can we can always um, uh, have a raised hand and uh, we give the floor. The floor will be open. Obviously, we can have a discussion around some of the challenges uh, and we can type them up for, for, for the person who has difficulty. But trust me, it's relatively easy. So without oh. further ado, I think... Um, I just yes. had a question. Mm, uh, do we have a break or something right now? For um, one, two minutes and then... Yes, indeed, uh, it was in the agenda. So if uh, hopefully participants, please do not leave us because we need your, your insights. Uh, if you would like to get a coffee or tea um, or a sip of water in two, three minutes while we quickly assign the rooms, uh, it would be wonderful. Thank you so much for your collaboration.
So everybody has been assigned to a room. I hope you can um, get ready to um, interact and I will open the rooms and transport you to, to your respective rooms and please open the board and um, interact. We will have our colleagues helping you um, across the board. Thank you.
Sylvia. What happened? Sorry, apologies. I don't know why somehow we returned to just uh, checking with you. Did everyone manage to reach the rooms? Yeah, yes, but okay. I think we were we the, the breakout rooms were closed. So we're all back in the plenary. Okay. Apologies. I don't yes. know what happened. Let me take you back to, to the <laughs> back. rooms. Yeah. Hi, Sylvia. Could you please put me in the breakout room three, Ube, here? Welcome Sylvia. back, everybody. I didn't realize we didn't have time anymore. Yeah, um, I thought we still had some more time. I'm sorry, I thought you saw the, the broadcast message. I just wanted to make sure that we have, uh, we have some time to, to engage as, as plenary, and we will obviously be, mm -hmm. uh, be recording all the, the, the comments, sticky notes, and, and consolidate that in the final report. Um, since time is running, let me hand over to some of the um, the uh, designated rapporteurs or colleagues that would like to share some some impressions from from the rooms. Please, uh, 
go ahead. I don't know if uh, Searing, you had um, a designated rapporteur mm -hmm. or you will... No, we didn't time. get the, get time. We thought we still had uh, the next uh, 10 minutes or so and the five minutes Sorry, I wanted 10 to... minutes left and I wanted to um, okay. allow. No Sorry, I thought you saw yeah, the yeah. broadcast message. I... No. Oh, no worries. Uh, we, we did, uh, everybody active, um, you know, participated very actively, as you can see from the board. Uh, they have uh, noted quite a lot of, uh, you know, recommendations as well as challenges. And some of them seems to be around lack of awareness, lack of budgeting. There's also like a political will for, you know, to prevent whole of government approach. Uh, in terms of accountability, you can see again, a lack of capacity in the parliament. Uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of lacks. It seems lack of uh, uh, research-based support for parliamentarians. Uh, in terms of solutions in the group, uh, uh, prioritizing the well-being. As uh, you can see, um, close engagement between Ministry of Finance and sector ministries, government on gender and climate change issues. In terms of monitoring. Uh, uh, some of the recommendations uh, and solutions posted are tracking budget clearly to all of the expenses to vulnerable groups, provide dedicated funding for the purpose, uh, feedback mechanism and loop should be in place, uh, gender and climate analysis. Uh, then um, in terms of mobilizing actors beyond government, I think uh, there's a lot of uh, impetus for support to parliamentarians, their capacity uh, because I guess in the end, it's the parliamentarians who approve the budget uh, lines. Uh, so set budget as priority and monitoring all payment as per plan from the government. So these are some of the issues and also recommendation solutions that has been noted in the sticky notes. I guess uh, when we start, uh, you know, um, synthesizing all the groups, uh, we, we might get similar answers. So that is uh, in just what the group has uh, jotted down. Excellent, thank you very much. This is very, very useful. Um, over to Athena to get some of the, the impressions from your group. Um, actually, what um, Sherry has shared is very similar to the things that we also, yeah, so I agree that once we put all these three boards together, we'll find like the same um, issues and, this, and probably the same solutions as well that other people have been doing. So, yeah, so, so for, for challenges, it's usually, um, yes, I agree, it's the lack of things, the lack of capacity, the lack of data, the lack of resources. Um, but one thing that was really striking is that um, the, this, this issue of, of high turnover rate and, and linking to political, like the political climate. So, and the, what obstacles in terms of the whole of government approach, we were talking about you know, difficulties in linking national and subnational levels. Um, there's compartmentalization and we're still working in silos. And yeah, and then different government agencies just have different ways of working and different timelines as well and different priorities. And I guess it's also because of the different um, context in which the different agencies work in. And then also for accountability, we're looking into CS, uh, more engagement of CSOs, more um, trainings on gender mainstreaming and more budget to track indicators over time. Um, for solutions, sorry, we have a note taker here <laughs> on the time. Okay, for, solution, for, for solutions, um, it, one is really engaging vulnerable groups and CSOs in capacity building around climate finance. Another is building knowledge, um, here, it's very practical. It's developing a line coding budget clearly for payments of climate change and building capacity of staff to actually undertake the review of those lines. For monitoring, we talk about double tagging, um, using gender responsive evaluation, and really scaling up some good practices. Like this is from Indonesia about um, gender, gender budget statements and gender pathways. Um, and for um, mobilizing actors, Again, the same the same things about um, strengthening engagement between CSOs and communities, providing and scaling up the work or the role of parliamentarians and identifying champions. And I think this is a very good point as well is 
we have to create the spaces for them to actually engage with each other. So, so yeah, I guess that's it for, for our third group. Good job, group three. This was amazing. It was a sprint, but amazing inputs. Excellent. Thank you very much. I think um, there are a lot of uh, similar thinking. Um, um, there's a lot of similar thinking emerging from all the groups. And I think uh, uh, we can also sh um, can echo the same, same um, issues around uh, some of the knowledge gaps, some of the capacity gaps. I won't repeat those. Um, but when it comes to certain solutions, um, there have been some nice examples um, presented around, um, for instance, engaging the local uh, level participatory budgeting actors, local adaptation plans linked to resilience planning exercises. So there's a way of sort of um, um, linking these ideas, as, as, as you were mentioning, uh, sometimes the, the timelines, the cycles, the sources of financing are not um, uh, fully uh, aligned. So more engagement, more dialogue is, is important around harmonizing these networks and also to sensitize the climate people to gender issues and the gender people to climate issues. I think the idea is to debunk some of the myths that these are isolated um, um, challenges or issues. So, so it is our collective um, um, role, let's say, to, to, to really enhance understanding. Um, and some of these guidelines that have been um, put forth, and obviously um, it would be uh, great to even dedicate further more targeted in-depth um, sessions to, to understanding that. And in fact, this is one of our objectives to, um, to, to gather um, your feedback um, around what would be more important to, to learn these, uh, to, to bridge these knowledge gaps. Um, and, and in a sense, um, I think there's an understanding that uh, it's about champions, it's about commitments, it's about people. So this group, uh, these groups are part of the solution. Um, so in the interest of time, we will um, quickly wrap up, but I wanted to share one more poll with you um, in order to, to get your feedback on um, what you would like to see in the future to, to really take um, this peer learning or mini community of practice forward. We can also reach out um, via email to, to, to gather more, more insights, but just to uh, you know, get your, your immediate thoughts and feedback. And, and um, as virtual events are not so easy to, you know, to, 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 uh, to manage there, there might al always be hiccups, but let's hope in the future we'll we also be able to, to have more um, in-depth um, learning opportunities um, where we, we can actually go into the details of some of these uh, solutions, uh, but it would be um, important to know um, if you would like to be part of this um, uh, broader community of, of continuous learning, exchange and dialogue, linking some of the levels, some of the, the sectors, some of the walks of life when it comes to uh, policymaking, planning, um, CSOs, um, UN organizations, development partners. So there's this um, coherence uh, across our interventions. Uh, so we, we share knowledge, we share data, we share guidelines. Um, it would be great to, to be able to count on you in that. And I really thank um, everybody for their wonderful contribution and presence and, um, and really hope to be staying in touch for, for future, future events and interactions. This was let's say one first attempt to, um, to really put all these um, um, elements together, but, but hopefully we will have more opportunities and we count on your, your um, presence in that. Let me also hand over to um, colleagues from, from um, you and women, uh, if you would like to um, add any, any um, concluding remarks. Um, on behalf of, of, of your organization, but uh, in any case, we will be staying in touch um, and, and, and reaching out to all the participants with, with the recording and with, with other, um, other uh, elements. Thank you, over to you. Thank you so much. Um, I realize that it's me or Bobby. Bobby, would you wanna say something?
Okay. Um, oh, okay. Good. Let's just go ahead. No. So this is, uh, um, the, the work with UNDP is in collaboration with you and women. And we're very much happy to learn with you in the series of peer learning events. And I hope this is not the, not the last time because we see that one of the key solutions that um, that is needed is actually for us to um, work together in order to to um, identify the solutions and just see what other the good practices are and really scale it up. So I hope this next peer learning um, event on on climate finance or gender mainstreaming. I hope we see each other and we'll be happy to learn with you and from you. So thank you so much. Go ahead, Sylvia. Thank you once again. I think you've seen the, the result of the poll, which is quite positive, although um, it doesn't involve all the participants. We know that everyone's busy, so some, some people have had to run. Um, but the overwhelming response is that you would be interested in, in, in further dedicated events and also in, in, um, in preserving this community and, and staying in touch. So we will find the right platform to, to do that. We have, um, we have all your um, contact details, but we will find a good way of, of making this uh, a living community. So thank you once again, um, wholeheartedly um, to all of you, to all the colleagues from, um, from government counterparts, from CSOs, from, from sister UN agencies, from, from research uh, partners. Um, it has been a pleasure and, and we will be in touch with you for, for, for the outcome report and for the next steps. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye. <laughs>